Hey everybody, John the Other here, <laughs> obviously, and uh, I'm going to return to an old popular topic, feminism. Uh, now, a lot of people think feminism is a, you know, egregious, outrageous, uh, obscene, anti-human, hateful, and all that stuff, and you're right, it's all of those things. But I think most people believe feminism is a either political or philosophical or maybe legal movement, maybe even economic. Uh, and while it manifests in all of those fields, I'm going to disagree that it is a political or even a secular movement. I'm going to say that feminism is a spiritual movement. In fact, it's religion. Now, it's an undeclared religion, but that is um, no hindrance at all. Feminism is actually more than a religion. It is a mystical religion. It is a, uh, a religion based in mysticism. Now, we hear all the time um, statements like, uh, written in as editorials, that women, we need to get more women into, I don't know, STEM fields and into corporate boards of directors, and we need more women CEOs, and we need more women uh, elected politicians, so in the, in the, in the seat of power in government, and we need more women managers in companies, and blah, 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 blah. And of course, when we delve into these articles or these opinions, we find the justification is that a woman with, uh, or a, a company with more female managers or with a female CEO is more profitable than a company, comparable company with male leadership, or that Companies with lots of female managers are happier places to work. Now, this is not true, um, or at least it's not uh, largely true. It's mostly false. But I am here not making the case that the opposite is true, that companies with male leadership are innately better in any way, either profitability-wise or happiness of the employees. In fact, that argument of whether companies are better to work for when they're run by men, or they're more profitable when they're run by men, or they have male managers, or the opposite, they're more profitable with female leadership. That entire conversation is a distraction and an unproductive one. What's actually being said when we hear all this rhetoric about female-led companies with female management or female executive staff, or that countries run by women, or that any enterprise at all with women in the position of leadership is in some way better, more profitable or happier or whatever. All of that is a misdirection. What is actually being articulated is a religious viewpoint, a mystical religious viewpoint that is not understood as a religious viewpoint even by the people making the argument. So you hear, well, companies are happier places with women leaders. Underneath all of that, layers and layers and layers and layers down, is the mystical belief that women are spiritually superior beings and that female energy is the positive force in the universe and male energy is the negative force in the universe. That's the actual religious, spiritual, mystical dogma of the religion of feminism. And again, it is a religion. It articulates itself as a secular political viewpoint or a... Uh, social viewpoint or even a legal or an economic viewpoint but really it's a mystical belief system and at the bottom where where it actually matters uh, is the idea that there is such a thing as male energy and feel female energy and that the universe has been dominated by male energy and that must now be squashed down and elevated must be now the female energy because female is positive and compassionate and loving and uh, cooperative and all. everything good that we think is good in the world we attach to the female energy uh, it's a concept it's not a real thing and everything negative aggression and uh, negative competition and uh, 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 violence and anger and hatred those are all male you know things we attach that to the male energy of the universe and now the universe to be balanced because it's been male dominated for whatever uh, some period of time we must fix it by elevating the female and that's what we actually are hearing articulated whenever we hear this rhetoric about we need more females in STEM, we need more females uh, in management roles, in middle management of a company, we need more female CEOs, we need more female uh, national leaders, and so on and so forth. And it's a bunch of woo-woo nonsense. What we're listening to is the 
filtered rantings of a religious cult. And all of the talk about whether female managers are better than male managers or whether female CEOs lead to a more profitable bottom line than male CEOs, that's, don't get caught up in that because they're not actually talking about anything that they're talking about. They're talking about mysticism. But we don't live in a mystical world. We live in a modern, secular, economic, and political world. And so all of these ideas, which are not even understood mostly as religious ideas, even by trained feminists, except at the very highest levels, we hear all this articulated as economic advice or as managerial advice or as psychological advice or quality of life advice. But that's a distraction. And we shouldn't get distracted and try to argue in those levels because that's not what's really driving that conversation. What's driving it is the mysticism. So when you are asked either as an employee of a company with an HR department or as a student maybe in a, in a university, and let's say you're studying physics or geo, uh, geology or uh, chemistry, and whatever field you're in, you're asked or maybe demanded by the uh, university that you're studying in or by your employer to write some statement or sign some statement or make some issuance of a, of, of a, of a position of that you're going to incorporate into your work as if it's a job or into your research or your scholarship, if it's a school, the, the die religion, the diversity, equity, and inclusion. How am I going to incorporate diversity, equity, and inclusion into my work as a geochemist or as a, a mathematician? How do, how do I wrap those tendrils of diversity, equity, and inclusion into my mathematical theorems or my, my research in geology or my field work sampling to try to find if there's a molybdenum deposit there so that the mining company can make some money? Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Realize that these statements that people are being required to participate into either repeat a prepared statement or craft their own, these are statements of religious uh, significance. You are being asked to, um, to attest to your faith in a religion because this whole feminist enterprise, and I include all the social justice which flows out of feminism, this is fundamentally a mystical religious viewpoint. And so all of these statements of obedience to it are statements of obedience to a religious faith. Now, religious faith, religious um, viewpoint is an area of human, um, human viewpoint that is quite strongly protected by law that you cannot be suppressed or persecuted or uh, in various ways molested based on your religious views. And so I am in no way suggesting that any of these religious feminist nutters, and, and I'm sorry, that's what they are, they're religious freaks, need to be uh, disabused or forcibly separated from their faith. That It is their faith and they're welcome to it. But there is no reason whatsoever that you, as a, as a non-participant in their religion, need to be forced or can be forced into making a pronouncement of your attestation to their faith, uh, which is what you're being asked or even required to do every time you're asked to sign a diversity, equity, and inclusion statement or incorporate a, some sort of claim as to how you're going to incorporate these religious principles into whatever work or research or scholarship that you are being uh, asked to do. There's no reason that you need to be forced to join a cult. So anyway, thanks for listening. If you want to help support the channel, there's links to subscribe, star, and Patreon in the low bar. Uh, and as always, have a lovely, lovely day.